titled Alternatives to Detention. And to move that resolution, we have Vary Love from Glasgow Proven Branch, and the resolution will be seconded by Councillor Graham Campbell. So welcome, Vary. Good afternoon, conference. And thanks very much to Kirsten for putting me on after Ian Blackford. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you today about immigration detention. Immigration detention in the UK is a wholly arbitrary system. It's not part of any criminal sentence. It's not decided by a judge. But last year in the UK... And the resolution will be seconded by Councillor Graham Campbell. So welcome, Vary. To detention. Thank you to Ian for a fantastic speech there. Delegates, let's move on with our resolutions now. We're going to move on to resolution number eight, which is entitled Alternatives to Detention. And to move that resolution, we have Vary Love from Glasgow Proven Branch, and the resolution will be seconded by Councillor Graham Campbell. So welcome, Vary. Good afternoon, conference. And thanks very much to Kirsten for putting me on after Ian Blackford. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you today about immigration detention. Immigration detention in the UK is a wholly arbitrary system. It's not part of any criminal sentence. It's not decided by a judge. But last year, nearly 25,000 men, women and children in the UK were held in immigration removal centres and in mainstream prisons. I want to stress that these people have not been found guilty of any crime. But the UK government keeps them in prison, sometimes in solitary confinement, for an indefinite amount of time. It's difficult to escape the conclusion that the UK government is spending increasingly large sums of money, your money, on this brutal, degrading, inhumane treatment, just to appease the backbenchers on the far right. Conference. This immigration system hasn't come about by accident. It is a policy choice. People escaping war can hardly go to the government who killed their family and just ask them for a passport. And if you don't have a passport, you can't escape using the so-called safe and legal routes. The experience is made as awful as possible for those who get here despite all the odds. Medical and legal support is denied, so it's harder for people to have a fair hearing. People are put into camps to keep them from forming relationships and stop them from being involved in their communities. They're given 40 pounds a week to live on so that very little life can be lived outside of the asylum system. Conference, only 13% of people held in immigration detention last year were actually removed from the UK. So that means that 87% of those people at least had a legal basis to be here. The rest were released back into their communities, having undergone a traumatic experience in detention for seemingly no good reason. Conference Home Office policy says that detention must be used sparingly and for the shortest possible period. I'm sure you'll be shocked to learn that there's a mismatch here between what the UK government do and what they say. In recent times, we've seen an expansion of the detention estate. We've seen camps opening in linton on Ouse and at Napier Barracks. We've seen the disgusting Rwanda scheme that's been so eloquently discussed earlier. Conference, the average cost of holding one person in detention is £99 per day. That doesn't include all the costs of the immigration and detention estate or the legal costs and the cost of other compensation that the Home Office might have to pay. We're in a cost of living crisis. Conference, in what world is this a good use of public funds? We had a discussion in this hall in 2019 where we agreed as a party on making sure that pregnant women and children are not detained in Scotland. We all agree with this. Of course, women and children shouldn't be detained. But as far as I'm aware, the reasons for these detentions are human error. Young people have been wrongly identified. Under 18s have ended up in detention by accident. Women haven't been aware that they're pregnant or they don't have access to medical care. The only way we can truly avoid these issues is by not routinely detaining people. Conference work has been done all over Europe in determining alternatives to detention. 
A pilot took place in Newcastle with Action Foundation, supporting 20 women who had been detained in Yarl's Wood. The women were provided with shared accommodation, they received one-to-one -one support from staff, and they were given legal counselling. They also had access to voluntary schemes such as English classes and social events. Evaluation of the programme found that participants were more stable and had better health and well-being outcomes than they had received when in detention. Evidence from this pilot suggests that these outcomes were achievable without people absconding from the immigration system altogether. The participants were empowered to engage with their situation and felt like they had control over the outcome, even with dealing with complex, difficult circumstances. Conference, this issue speaks to the heart of what we want an independent Scotland to look like. Are we going to support the casual brutality of the UK government? Or will we look for kinder, better alternatives that support the most vulnerable people? People who come here fleeing war and persecution and seeking safety and refuge. Support the motion.